basically said to me is that um, I don't know, basically to me, it, it basically said to just remain vigilant with your recovery, basically that, you know, you're not going to be perfect, um, you know, even especially, like I said, with your motives, um, you know, you may have ulterior motives for, you know, doing the right things, but um, at the same time, that's okay, um, you should uh, be accepting of that. And um, continue to be vigilant in your recovery. That'd be good. How much time do you have clean? Um, I think I'm at like four weeks now. Hey, four weeks. All, <laughs> all right. I thank God for last night's rest. This morning rise. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Grace is always giving me what I don't deserve. And mercy is not giving me what I do deserve. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. How the brothers and sisters doing this morning? Everybody good? Good. Yeah. All right. Truly a blessing to be back here. Um, my name is Derek McKnight. My partner, Robert Hayes, is here in spirit, but he's not here in the physical. Like I was telling the young man right here, um, he worked with Judicator Youth in Chester. Right? He said that's something he might want to do. So if anybody else want to do that, I can give you his number. And then y'all can, you know, can talk about that right there, being mentors for Judicator Youth. Um... My agenda for this morning, right? I, I, I thank God for Miss Sophia, beautiful sister, right? Um, she really cares. And she always give me homework assignments. You all right? That's okay. She always give me homework assignments. And this morning she gave me um, talk about habit, developing habits. Anybody hear that? Four stages to create habits. See, because I know when I come here, I know what I probably want to talk about, what be what on my spirit, what's on my mind. But when you get homework assignment for somebody else, it'll throw you a curveball. Then you got to get into what? Into study mode. And I love that because I'm, I'm dealing with something that I would never look at. All right. But it has my um, my full attention because habits is really important. Who know about habits? How about good habits? Bad habits? All right, and these are what I learned this. There are four stages to creating a habit. Number one is Q, Q-U-E. That's like triggers. And that's what? It's about noticing the reward. The reward is what? Something that we want, all right? That's, ha that's how habits begins. It starts with a trigger. Something my eyes see that it wants. Men, when we see a woman, you ever hear that? Okay, women, they might see a guy. Our reward, we want it. That's a trigger. Drugs. Well, I use drugs out of what? My first time using it was what? Um, I was sober until like I was like 19 years old when I got to college, Eastern Shore, Maryland, Princess Anne, Maryland. My man was rolling up five J's behind it. We had a basketball game at the time. It was halftime. We smoked five J's. I didn't know what I was smoking. I didn't know what was going to hit me. We got back into the um to the gym. The heat was on like this place here. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the heat hit me and the first time he smoking weed the he hit the weed and listen and I was dancing I was doing the pop lock and I was popping I was spinning on my back I was doing the centipede and that was I loved the feeling and when I loved that feel, I said, wow, I never felt like this ever before in my life because I grew up with switches and extension cords. And if you get out of hand, you listen, you get a backhand or a right hand. You hear what I'm saying? But see, we were, it was never abuse back in the day. I'm 52. It was about, it was about love. <laughs> you, that? you was worn first. Then you got the switch. Worn first. Then you seen the belt. Dirk. Grown folks are talking, mind your business. I kept talking. I, I saw the, I saw the belt. <laughs> there I go to school. I hook school. I saw the belt. You know what I'm saying? Um, I used to forge my report cards. I was I, I had criminal behaviors way before I even picked up drugs. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. and, that, and I started forming what? Bad habits. Stealing in stores. Who stole candy? You know what I'm saying? And guess what? It's like us. When we was little kids, right? When we stole and did something bad, we got away with it. Then it became fun. Mm -hmm. Who remember running for the cops? Man, that was exciting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not to get locked up, right? Forming what? Habits. You know what I'm talking about? So Q is what? A trigger. 
I see something and it's triggering me and it got my interest. Number two is cravings. I see it and I got cravings. It's about wanting the reward. Number one is what? About noticing the reward. Craving is about what? Wanting the reward. Who's diabetic and who eat reckless? If I don't talk about who's trying to lose weight, but you still got a um, pound of ice cream and pound cakes and, you know, um, fried food. Anything that we shouldn't be eating, but we still want it. If I don't talk about other than what? Drugs. Who like to drive without a license? Okay. <laughs> I want that car, but I have no license or no insurance. Catch me if you can like the gingerbread man. You better have your gat in hand. Because I see it, now I what? I notice it. Number two, I got a craving, I what? I want it. And to want is the reward. Number three is the response, to obtain it. So I smoked weed, I saw my man smoking, I was curious. I tried it, now I want it. Now I obtained the weed smoke. But nobody never told me, or I never seen a bag of weed with ingredients on the bag of weed. <laughs> I'm talking about you keep smoking, you will graduate. You keep smoking, your tolerance will go up. You keep smoking, you will graduate to bigger things than weed. If I don't talk about, listen, weed is a gateway to what? Other drugs. I used to smoke woolies. Weed, y'all call them turbos. Weed laced with crack cocaine. You know what I'm saying? What top paper? Who remember orange thumbs? Who remember, remember tweezers? Going real back in the day, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so my reward is what feeling something. Listen, look, like like she had our condolences to um to her brother had passed away. Death is a big blow. Anybody hear that? And a lot of us want to try to numb or to escape how we really feel. And drinking the pain away, smoking the pain away, popping pills like Skittles to take away to alleviate the pain. Try to sex it out. Sex will make it work. No, after all, you get up off the performance and wash up. You still dealing with what? Same old shit. The same problem. Some people try to go shop it out. Go to the mall. Go to what? Go up there with a king of pressure. Go to Macy's. Come out here with bags like this and still <laughs> miserable. One girl said she bought twenty four dollars, twenty four hundred dollars of merchandise just to take it back because she was trying to fill her void with things. Not a high power. That's the only thing that was to fill my void. Because when we divorce drugs, a lot of us got lonely and miserable. And didn't know what to do. Anybody felt like that before? Mm -hmm. I just get it. So some guy cued the trigger. I see something. I'm noticing. I'm noticing something that I want. Number two, it produces what my cravings. I'm wanting what I see. Number three is the response. When I get it, I want to maintain it. Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Who know when? Who remember back in the day when dope was real dope? When dope, you didn't get dope sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you smoke coke and real coke don't make you jump out of windows. Yeah. <laughs> It'll make you call the police on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real coke don't. One one dime bag of weed. You rolled off 40 J's. <laughs> 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 and me and my man right here, we got to get into altercation. He, he, he steal me. We fight. He beat me up today. We fight again tomorrow. I beat him just tomorrow. He beat me up the day after that. I beat him the day after that. And, and the next day after that, we become best friends. The hammers didn't come out back in the day. These was the hammers back in the day. A pack of Newports was less than five dollars. Super remember those times? <laughs> yeah, right. Back in the what? Today. But and, and a lot of us we live in the past because listen, the past is what it helps us escape what the present. Who look in the mirror? You see PTSDs. Who look in the mirror? See trauma. Who see hurt of loved ones? How about death of loved ones? How about childhood atrocities? And that's reality. And a lot of us don't like reality, so we always in fantasy. And drugs and alcohol and pills is the vehicles that take us back to the matrix. Because I'm trying to escape reality. We gotta face it to fight it. Fight it, then we defeat it. Defeat it, that's victory. Victory, testimony. And I'll never have a testimony from the next person coming through that door if I'm always running from myself four stages of what habit the cue the trigger all right number two the cravings all right i'm after it the response i got it i'm trying to maintain it and the last one is the reward or the end game of every habit the end game of every habit some people love selling drugs it's the rush that I have people's attention. I have what you want from me. And I am uh, your, I am the what? The means of what? 
your cravings or your disease or your demise. I have what you need. I have what you want. And it really get people off that have finally had what? Attention. The wrong type of what? Attention. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. All right. Habits. So how do we break bad habits to make them good habits? If bad habits is used, then how do we start to stay clean? What habits do we got to develop to stay clean? Expose it. Number one, Wednesday is the first of the month. Who gets checks? Who's nervous? Nobody. I used to always get nervous first of the month because those checks come. Anybody hear that? And how do you see money? Do you see money as what? The opportunity to get high? Huh? <laughs> you want to what? checks. <laughs> crazy money? You want a crazy check? <laughs> It's not a crazy check. Okay, you know, you know, okay. Uh, okay. I think some of the crazy checks. <laughs> Play crazy. One, one, my partner Rob, he said his uncle stood on the table at SSI office butt naked. Oh, man. You got <laughs> a check? Yeah, give him his check. You got a check? <laughs> he, got, he, got, he got a bonus. <laughs> the dude was naked. <laughs> Lord have mercy. First time we seen that one. Yo, brother, yo, take a picture of him. But anyway, yo, money. <laughs> Look, another thing too, to change the bad habits, we got to change the way we see money. You ready that? Because money was never my problem. I thought it was. Money ain't the problem. This is the problem. And the heart is the problem. So if the mind doesn't change and the heart doesn't get circumcised to change, I would do the wrong thing with this change. Everybody understand that? And I got to be honest about me holding money because me, back in the day, I used to always get money. When I didn't have money, I was what? Seeking to get money. That means it taking it from you, stealing it, yo, degrading myself, compromising my integrity or dignity to get this to feed my habits. So how do we start to change the way we think, how we see money? How early in the early stages of recovery. How about getting a payee? That was hard for me. To have another person hold your money. Mm-hmm. Anybody done it before? I paid still my money. Ain't you say? I paid still 15 grand from Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I see. You say it's got it back, though. You got it back? I had to go pull out of the chain. Right, without a doubt. Payees do still. How much yeah. time y'all clean, brother? Three. Hey, all right. God bless. Money. All right, money. To invest it. Um, here's another thing, too. Um, when I when I always when I had money, right, I had to realize that yo, I had to change the way I think, right? And when I got tired of using, right, I I I'm I'm be honest, I didn't have a pay. I, I recovered on the muscle. My I was hacking for crack. And I was at um down at 15th and Filbert, down Center City. And I picked somebody up and I hit somebody, right? I was that I was driving, I was up all day long, and I was just tired. And my last my last accident, I was hacking for crack, and that was the last time I used. I, I made a fortified, sincere proposition proclamation to myself that darkening night that's it and i listen i got a god bless me for another job i was doing paratransit and i was a recovering addict and i had my recovery i had my meeting book in my truck and then my wife had taken him to the northeast it was a meeting up there i sat still to had to go pick her up from center city i got to center city or meeting was there i made a meeting every day i did a 90 and 90 from the truck because i was determined to stay Clean. Enough is enough. Tired of making my mother cry. Tired of stealing from my brother. Tired of being skinny as a goddamn pencil. Tired of being a fugitive. Tired of running. Tired of lying. Tired of having nothing. Tired of being another place and another season for the same goddamn reason. When will it change? I had to get serious with me. Then I have to start reading the word of God. If you're a Muslim, you got to read the Quran. And if you're not a Muslim, then you got to read the word of God. And if you're Jewish, you got to read the Torah. And if you like Buddha, then you got to read recovery Dharma. Then I have to start reading my mind to change my mind. Anybody understand that? So I was working and reading, working and reading, and giving up the tapes like Richard Nixon. <laughs> All my life. <laughs> I'm not getting high no more. You hear what I'm saying? And, and, and here's another thing, too, about habits. Cigarettes. It was harder to stop smoking cigarette than crack cocaine and weed and alcohol. Cigarettes, hard to stop smoking. And when I guess I woke up sick one day, that's when I was married. I said, I'm not smoking today. She said, what you, t- what you all right? I said, yeah, I'm going to work. And I got through the whole day without smoking a cigarette and I celebrated internally. And guess what? And then the, the, the temptation got what? Um, real intensified because she made a, she cooked what that night and she usually don't cook. 
<laughs> because you, you smoke after you eat. Yeah, come on. Here I am trying to stop smoking cigarettes. Trying to change my what? Habits. And I'm trying to develop a new habit of not smoking them. Breath stink. <laughs> Yo, ox- out of oxygen, out of air. Can't really run. Listen, I want to change a new, I start a new habit. So I made one day, and one day turned to three, two days, and two days turned to seven days, and I had a week, and two weeks turned to a month, and I got multiple years not smoking cigarettes. When I get stressed, I smoke a cigarette. When I go to the bathroom, I need a cigarette. After sex, I need a cigarette. Before sex, a cigarette. Some people smoke door sex. <laughs> but, but it was hard for me to stop smoking cigarettes other than what? Drugs. Come on. Yeah, I do I slowed down the last two days with my cigarettes. Okay. But I've been eating like crazy. Uh, anybody hear that? That's a reason, some reason why lots of people don't want to stop smoking because you eat. Yeah, Instead I eat like, like all this different yeah. stuff. But, like my body's like, okay. Yeah, I'm eating all this different stuff. Uh-huh. I don't know what to eat. I'm eating this and that. Go back to discipline. Anybody hear that? So if you stop smoking cigarettes, then you got to get disciplined with you and know what you're eating. That's all. Yo, Come on. The only thing that sucks is like, I don't have one thing to stop. I got it. Like, it's like, like my thing can come from everything. Smoking cigarettes, to the drugs, to the gambling, to the, the, the nightlife, to the, the hit licks, to making money, to rot, uh, to the fans like. like mm-hmm. and so you say you stop one thing, right? I come with something else. And, and then it's, it's just trying to stop the other thing. You pick up a cigarette, like, I, I don't know. I came out of jail, <laughs> and I smoked for two years, right? Uh-huh. I'm like, I ain't smoking in two years. I don't need a cigarette. Uh-huh. As soon as I smoke. Can I get one of them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Smell it, that yeah. quick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so. Anybody hear that? Yeah. How you doing today? I'm all right. That's my yeah. buddy right there. <laughs> all right, my man. You staying legal? I am. All right, very good. I have three days. I got three days today, but. Three days what? Three days playing YouTube. Hey! Oh. All right, my But my, my help is supposed to be coming home soon. And the plug, this is how God worked. Where I was going. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Two hours after I left. Mm. Two hours after I walked out that crib, it got kicked in. And there were two ounces of uh, meth. He was going. He, he was, who knows how long he's going here. But that was like the only place I knew if I wanted if I wanted to get it, to get it. Mm-hmm. Anybody hear that? Mm-hmm. So when he left, place got raided. That's God. Mm-hmm. That's God. And it's a wake up call. That's like, right. Dude, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> right. Let me make sure with all your energy, God, that's for everybody in here. That's why, that's why we got to change that energy and we've got to make it positive energy. Like I said, for those who like to talk, maybe want to be a, a teacher or a mentor, certified peer specialist. We got that. What, what's in us? We got to flip that energy. Drug dealers make the best, make the best um, clients up there in Wall Street because it's the same transferable skills up in Wall Street. They know it, but they don't want us up there. We probably would we make a killing. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Can we take the same, the same mechanics from the streets and bring it to what? Legitimate. Yes. And make money. And that's what we got to do. So we stay on the legitimate side. Everybody understand that? That's real. For those who used to put their hands on a woman, maybe you need to teach self-defense classes. You hear that? Never to put your hands on a woman again. You know what I'm talking about? We got to switch that energy. For those who like to fight and always angry, maybe you need to go box and start our own boxing gym and get kids that's angry in the gym so they can hold their hands and channel their energy correctly. Starting what? New habits. Real important. Let's add on to that. Let's talk about 12 toxic behaviors that push people away. 12 toxic behaviors that push people away. Number one, being envious of everyone. Any, any haters in here? They don't, let, they don't, don't let envy or jealousy get the best of you. Envy is the art of contenting someone else's blessings instead of your own. There is nothing attractive or admirable about this behavior. So stop comparing our journey with everyone else's. Your journey is your journey, not a competition. You are in competition with one person and one person only, ourselves. Everybody hear that? You are competing to be the best you, you we can be. If you want to, measure your progress, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. You might take a swing at that pitch right there. Toxic people, envy and jealous. Anybody get envious and jealous of anybody? Come on. Me? I yeah. do. I do. I get, I get envious of people that have clean time. And make up their mind to do it. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah, I get, I get, I get jealous of people that go to work and pay their bills. Uh huh. Hey, of so-called normal. Mm -hmm. normal, normal, whatever that normal is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have to wake up and not be like, I don't want to get out of bed. Like, my mom, my mom, and my sister help take care of my kids with me, and like, that, that, that amount of work they do. I'm like, I just I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Why can't I do that? Mm -hmm. You know, I get a second break, and I don't like. How much time do you clean? A day. A day? Yeah. Give it to her. What's your name? Tracy. Tracy. You know what I read, Tracy? Envy is uh, envy is disdain, dislike for me, but admiration for you. Meaning I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like what I became. I don't like my habits. I don't like my desires. But I but I what? I have admiration for him because he's living it up and he's doing the right thing. And I want not what he has, but I want to be doing what he's doing, the right thing. Mm -hmm. So that's envy. Envy is disdain and dislike for self, mm -hmm. but admiration for someone else. Jealousy is malicious. Jealousy crossed the line of envy, and it goes into what? Straight up hatred. Mm -hmm. And trying to stop somebody's what? Blessings. Anybody been there before? Mm -hmm. Like I used the example, the, um, what's the two, car, um, two cars and girls, of Caucasian ladies that was ice skating? Oh, the one that the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Prime example. Yeah, prime example. And the boyfriend hit her back. Yeah, prime example. How about um, with Joey Botafogo, Amy Fisher? I mean, she was jealous of what his wife, and she's a minor, and she he, he having sex with a minor. That's statutory rape. But she didn't care. I guess they didn't, they didn't get to the to whatever to the the right people. And she, out of her envy and jealousy of his what wife, she rings the doorbell, has the gun. She comes out and pop her right in the head. She don't die, but she get jail time. See how envy moves to jealousy, and jealousy is malicious. Yeah. Anybody hear that? So you gotta check that envy. Okay, envy moves to what? Jealousy in Detroit. Like a couple of miles outside of Detroit, it was two cops. It was on my phone, watching it on my phone today, right? Two cops. Well, I think the girl was 26 and the guy was whatever. They, they was in their 20s. And it was together. And they had two beautiful kids. She was talking about leaving him. He shot her, killed her, and blew his brains out. Anybody hear that? I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Because some people hide who they are. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The representative, you never, you, know, you always show the representative, but you never see the real person until you get in an argument or until you tell somebody no. Then you get to see who you're really dealing with. I'm impulsive. Anybody here impulsive? Mm -hmm. Yes, always running in. I used to be a hater too. How he get hurt? He looked like E.T. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ugly little bastard, how you get hurt? Listen, he driving her car. I really was envious and jealous. I said, blow his, listen, I can't get to see that he goes there. <laughs> goes, I'm going Biggie Small. I forgot what, 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 what that, I miss Big. I miss Big was talking about how he used to be on the block when he used to sell drugs. You see dudes come through in, in Mercedes Benz. They say, yo, he little sucker. Yo, we should rob him. They say, now I'm the one riding through in the Benz. And the same speech is coming up. Envy, jealousy is dangerous. Who remember Amadeus? I love Amadeus. Uh, Amadeus, the guy who got thrown out the plane in Scarface. Remember him? The one with the big nose. Oh, yeah. He's an Amadeus. Mozart. And what I love about it was that Mozart was, in true story, was a little boy, like seven or nine years old, blindfolded, playing beautiful melodies. And he was jealous and envious of little Mozart. He said, how can this little bastard who chased women, pass gas, bite their breasts, Yo, smack them on their behind. Don't practice, play beautiful melodies. Because see, God give people special gifts and anointing on their lives. <clears throat> and when a man doesn't know his position, there's always friction. Let me say that again. When a man or woman don't know their position, there's always friction. Because I'm not called to do what Miss Ophelia do. I'm not called to do what you would do. I'm only called to do what I was what put here to do. Some people get envious and they become influence of your life and they try to become you or try to stop the blessing that God gave us. We call them spiritual abortionists. They come to kill the gift that God put inside of us. So it's okay to envy, sweetheart, somebody who's recovering because now we have a role model. You find what I'm saying? Because people can talk it all day long, but are they living clean? You can talk clean, but are you living 
clear. That's why I say be careful of your P and your pays and your sponsors. You buy that? My one of my sponsors still owe me a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> He, he gave me a sad story. We got robbed. He lying. He lied. He didn't get robbed. He lied, right? And here I am. I'm not paying no rent. I'm a house manager in Southwest Philadelphia, and I give him $100. I said, well, I'm getting my money back. He said, Friday. I called him on Thursday to remind him about my money on the Friday. The number you just have dialed has been, I said, I'll be damned. I seen him six, about five years later, and he forgot about my $100. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic people. God, being envious of what? Everyone else. How many women here compare themselves to another woman? Why is that dangerous? Any women to compare themselves to another woman? That's not her real ass. That's butt pads. <laughs> Listen, how many dudes compare themselves to what the other men? I did used to. I wanted to be 6'6. I wanted to be tall like Michael Jordan. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be a rapper. I wanted to be the Wu Tang Clan. I wanted to be Nas. I wanted to be everybody except me. And my life was like miserable and I was depressed and I was unhappy and I was ungrateful and I was bitter and I was always self, well, self condemning myself because I did not like what God what, made me to be. But now that I love me, everything I love about me today, but I had to grow up and it took time for me to just to do that. So, so when we envy somebody, don't let envy move into jealousy because now we're truly out of character. How about number two of toxic people taking everything too personally? People are toxic to be around when they believe that everything happening around them is a direct ass assault on them or is someone or some way all about them. The truth is that what people say and do to you is much more about them than you. People reactions to you are about their perspectives, wounds and experiences. Whether people think you are amazing or believe you're the worst, again, it's more about them. I'm not suggesting we should be narcissists they ignore all feedback. I'm saying that so much hurt, disappointment and sadness in our lives come from taking things personally. Who take everything personally? When we talk about that, come on, we're listening. And then how it becomes toxic when we do that. To take I everything. I, I think I do it to look for an argument. Ah, to look for an argument. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah, to look your high. Thank you. That's my excuse, yeah. To win. To win. To excuse to get high. Very good. Come on, sis. Okay, I was going through something last week with my neighbor in their trash. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, it, but it, I, I still think I'm valid. But I went over, and my dad said to me, "You're just you're angry, and you're, you're you're angry because you've been clean for so long. You don't do with all your anger." So I ended up going over there very nicely, saying something to her, like, "Hey, we had now have crows in our driveway, like eating out of the trap. You know what I mean? Like, can you please clean it up?" She didn't. So then Friday comes. This is three days later. She still forgets to take the trash out again. Mm. But she cleaned it up. Mm. So I feel better now. But yes, I, I think I was looking for a, like a fight kind of. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? Although I had a valid reason to tell. Like you should clean your trash up. We live in fucking Ridley Township. You get in trouble for this stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. All over the place. I got crows laying in my driveway. I've been there 16 years. Mm. Not once was a crow laying in my driveway. These people just moved in 10 months ago. They're very nice people. They're my age. got kids. They're good people. Uh -huh. It was just a trash problem. But I think I was looking for a fight. Uh -huh. I think I was. Okay. I was ready to whoop this bitch's ass. Like, I went to run over there and whoop her. Just for the fact that I say something to you Tuesday about trash. And then you still don't take your trash out Friday, and it wasn't cleaned up within those three days. Yeah. But to me, like, to me, she was like, "I'll clean it up," but then shut the door and was like, "Fuck you." You know what I mean? Right. That's how I feel. That's how you took it. That's exactly how I took it. I got it. you. It happens this week. I'm gonna whoop her ass. No. <laughs> but I really think I was looking for a fight. Ah. Uh, go over. And I said something to her. It was very nice though. We laughed. Yeah. I know I walked away. She said she was going to clean it up. That's why I feel. That's why I'm taking it personal. So she just got trash all over the yard? What? Well, she, okay. So she came with one trash can when she first moved in. There, there's like 10 people that live in that house, which aren't supposed to be that many. Whatever. Okay. She rented out from a lady that used to live there years ago. And they, like I said, came with one trash can. Trash bags would go in there. It doesn't have a lid or anything. So squirrels would get into it, whatever, drag it all over the place. Now, they have dogs. And so does my neighbor. So I'm in between. I'm in between. I'm a house in between. A house with dogs. So yeah. when the squirrels and animals get that stuff, they don't go in their yards and eat it because they know they're dogs. So they bring it over to my yard, mm -hmm. which I, I share a driveway with these people. Uh -huh. That's how close our houses are. 
So they had trash everywhere, scattered all over the, the driveway. They weren't even pulling all the way up the driveway because there was trash there. Wow. You see my point? And it was yeah. like that for, it's like, that, it's been like that since they've moved in. Mm. But now it's getting worse because now there's crows noticing it from uh-huh. above. Uh-huh. And now they're sitting on top of her house, crowing it. So they <laughs> calling all their buddies to come eat. You know what I mean? And, then, and, and, now, and me, I'm not a cop caller. I'm not going to call nobody. So like I said, for 10 months, it's been like that. Within the past week, though, it got worse. Uh-huh. So I had to say something to her Wednesday morning. I mm-hmm. said something to her. I saw the first fucking crow land. I was like, I have this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what's going to happen. There's going to be mice that come next. Insects. And raccoons. Everything is going to be. like, And we have a crick by our house. That shit does not come up in my driveway. It never does. Everybody in my street's pretty clean. I live in Folsom, really township. So that it's clean there. So anyway, the point being is she didn't clean it up. Those whole three days. Uh-huh. So to me, I took that personal. Like you, you said you were going to clean it up, and you still did. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Am I right, guys, or am I wrong? I mean, please tell me if I'm wrong. Because I still, I, cause I feel like I'm doing something wrong by being so mad about her trash. It sounds like they're all drunk. You can't, you can't go to township. I could, but I'd rather deal with it. No, no, no. Either I could call the township, they get a fine right away. This is why I want to say something to them first. Okay. And then for the fact that we still don't clean up, I had every right to call the township after that. Right. And then like, it, but I'd rather whoop her ass. No. Right <laughs> and whoop her ass in the backyard. Hey, everybody hear that? Is she, is she on drugs? I don't think so. Because that's, a, that's a how a person on drugs would live. They would... Now, me, right, I, know, I, 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 I could never pay so much. And outside. people in the house. Come on. Yeah, if you walk outside and see that trash, like, of your own house, you'd be like, hey, well, that's got to be cleaned up. Like, but right. if you're on drugs, you just keep it moving because you got to guess more things. Right. right. You know what I mean? And next thing you know, it piles up just like our fucking law, like our legal fucking shit. It piles up, piles up, piles up until. Right. Well, she definitely don't want no meth. If she's on anything, it's got to be dope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I did dope all those years living here. My house, not once have I ever had trash all over the place. Yeah. When you say it's 10 people in the house, too. There's like 10 people in the house. And when I said something to the owner, because I know the owner, like I said, that I lived there for 16 years. The owners lived there, and then they moved out a year. Uh-huh. So now, they're, now this is the first time they've ever rented that house out there. Anymore. They're not going to landlords. Mm-hmm. So this is their first time. So she says, if there are ever any problems, please call me. Now, I never did, because I wanted to handle it with the girl next door, because we're cool. Right. I mean, I talked to her, said, good morning. How you doing? And, and so I'm being nice. So I want to say something to her. But then when she didn't clean it up and the owner came to the house to look at the roof, I said something to her. She called me that night. She was like, what's going on? I just let her know. So it did get cleaned up. Not even then. Not even that night did it get cleaned up. After I said something to the owner, uh, it got cleaned up the next morning after the trash man already left. Hmm. That's what she comes running outside in panic like she didn't fucking know. I gave them paperwork saying when trash comes, what time, what days it don't. Mm-hmm. So she can't even say that she didn't have that shit because I gave it to her Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's cleaned up. It's cleaned up. Like, listen, I gave them a trash can. So now they have two trash cans yeah. with no lids. I gave them a trash can a month after they moved in. Uh-huh. So for nine months ago, I gave them a trash can. Not, not that I expected the thank you. You know what I mean? But trash cans don't appear. They, they ain't cheap either. No, they're not. <laughs> but, I gave, but I gave her one of my ones I have recycling. You know what I mean? When I was getting my thrax, I just bought two new ones. Yeah. Real good ones. are real fucking expensive. I have two of them. I'm damn near ready to give them one of them. Just because they have so many people in the house. And mm-hmm. they're not supposed to have that many people there. And when the owner said to me, oh, well, there's only two adults and four kids living there. I didn't say shit. I didn't say, oh, miss, you're wrong about who's living in your house. Because that's not why I'm calling. I'm right. calling a ride on you about how many cars you've got parked on the street and other neighbors are mad about. Mm-hmm. That's not why I'm calling. Mm-hmm. Don't bust your ass on the trash in the driveway and shoot the homeowners. I should. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I'll throw that out there later on tonight. I'll be able to sleep on that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, but I'm right though, right? Like I'm not wrong. Your feeling, your feelings are valid. Your feelings are valid. But right, it will work out. It will work out. Right, without a doubt. I'll go over there every day if I have to. Be like, that might not be good. Excuse me, miss. Like, you don't want probation. No, I really don't. I'm on probation. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, right. So you might catch her on the wrong day. She might say something slick that you might grab her. Yes, you better put her on the landlord. Right. She then you in the paddy wagon. Then we don't see you when I come in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna get it. How much time got clean? We got uh, August first. Hey, all right, all right, you. Good food, sis. Thank you. Taking things personally. They're trash. They need to clean it up. Right. Come on, come yeah, on. Yeah, we moved in this town like eight years. Uh huh. And in the Domini way, you know what I mean. And I was at work one day. Uh huh. One of the neighbors, I didn't know who he was. Says it to my girl. He's like, 
It better not be no noise around right here. Who said that? That's a nigga. Better not be a lot of noise around here. It's quiet around here. Okay. It's okay. probably blue. Let me know. So, you know, she cussed him out and all that. So, like, months go by. So, yesterday, she got locked up. So, I had to get the car and pound it from the Wawa where the cops got the car at. Mm-hmm. To our contracts. Now, we have parking spots. It's number. So, I parked in the, this guy, the same guy. I parked in his parking spot when I parked the car. He sticks a note on my door and says, please move the, and they said, move your car. <laughs> they say, please. They move your car. So I go out, the car. And that is on, 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 on the window. Uh, move your car. Okay. Yeah, the car move it. I move it to the next spot. Uh-huh. So as I'm walking to the wild, I look back, he's coming. He's coming uh, into the complex. Mm-hmm. So he gets out the car and says, um, Oh, I apologize, you know, but um, you, you could have said please. Mm-hmm. So I realized this was the guy that said something to her four months ago. Mm-hmm. So I had to bite my tongue. Okay. And I'm waiting for the guy to say something. I want him to say something to stick to me one more time. Mm-hmm. I'm older than him, one. He's not going to disrespect me, not disrespect me. But I'm trying to, like, you know, keep my composure. Where's your car being parked at? I park. I don't drive. But okay. I had to move the car. Okay. So I moved in. I parked in his his, his numbers. Okay, and gotcha. I parked in his spot. Okay. But it's the same guy that made that comment. When okay. He went. Now I realize who that this guy is. Right. So like, okay, leave a note. No please or nothing. Mm-hmm. Move your car. Mm-hmm. Alright. You you I'm gonna catch you in the laundry room. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. My number is yeah, WWF Cage yeah, like, Match. Like this dude, like, 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 you're disrespectful. Like you're younger than us, so you're being disrespectful. No more. Mm-hmm. He didn't even know I stayed there, but he kept his mouth shut. He never said nothing to me after that. Mm-hmm. He speaks now. He seen me, mm-hmm. but now I know he was the guy that said something. My girl. He probably mm-hmm. shit himself coming. You're on the dryer. Now he want to speak to me and all that. Hey, so he got a laundry one. You got a laundry one day. He's like, uh, oh, you doing laundry? Like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, I work at nighttime too. Basically saying like, be quiet at night. Like, right. This job. I do what I want. You live out here? No, but he's the one to call the home manager people on little bullshit. They okay. Can't, they can't do anything, but still. Okay. It's, no. He's petty. But he's petty. I got you. Like, I, I, I like to put out fires before they get started. And my lady's children, or son, when he used to live with us, he used to put out, um, what's the thing's called? Fire, what's the thing's called to the, 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 the protect your parking space? Uh, cones. The cones. Yeah. I say, yo, take, move them cones, man. We don't own, we don't pay for no damn parking. We rent this house. You find what I'm saying? And we're not getting no, no walls of no goddamn parking space. Just move your car, park your car up the street, and then walk your ass back. Well, some people house. own it, some people rent. We own. I don't know. You guys different. I don't know. Uh, we rent. I think you rent, but you're not to talking like that. I understand that. But see, I, like I said, but see, I know how people are. Some people are miserable, and they're just waiting for an opportunity to bust your ass, to shoot at you, anything crazy. You find what I'm saying? It's like when I go pick up my, my granddaughter. I used to go pick up. Now, thank God, the bus pick her up now, right? But I used to go up there. I see how one day when she, she had those days, they had a dress down day. We got a new boots. She got new jeans, a new jacket. And the girls got envious, started pulling on her hair and all that madness. And I can see how the wrong parent will come up there and beat up somebody else's kids. And then you have a war with what parents? Yes, Put out fires before they get started. Some mothers driving their daughters up to fights. Some fathers at games more animated than their own sons. Put my son back in a goddamn game, man. What's your problem? Fighting up the goddamn referees. And they're more animated than the damn children. I like to put out fires before they get started. But neighbors, that's big. They stole my trash can. Yeah. All right, yeah. Still not Probably the one I spoke to, too. Come down, come down. It was funny because when I came out and I parked the car, he just pulls up. Uh, and he's watching me. Yeah. Like, come knock on my door. You got some. Go put them on. Like, I ain't doing no thing. Right, right. <laughs> like, like, but the worst. You show them cow, you're cow. Like, you put them on. They yeah. say, please, you won't say move. Right. Everybody's out. When they're being nice to your face, though, and then still don't do what they, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a lot of people are cowards. They're they cowards. I'd rather her would have been like, no, bitch. I'm yeah. not cleaning up shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have rather heard that. Even that definitely Right. Would be then lie and say, I will. Just a, just a very nice people. It just sucks. Yeah. Just sucks. We always get dopes. We always get dopes. How you doing, my friend? Horrible. 
Don't <laughs> ask buddy. me a question if you don't expect everything and anything to come out my mouth. Okay, bro, that's my buddy there. It's like it's like my, my like my sister Sophia, right? The most difficult people will teach us how to what? To teach. Everybody hear that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so let me say it again. Let me, it's all right, brother. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here, brother. It's okay. The most difficult person teaches a per teaches a teacher how to really teach. Because if everybody's in compliance, of course you stand here, ask questions, wait for a response, get the lessons, and roll out. It's the difficult one. It's the one who might hold the group for hostage, mm -hmm. who never talk on topic, who always up here in the air and they land on topic after five minutes of dialogue. <laughs> like, goddamn, <laughs> you follow you what I'm saying? But difficulty always start what ease. So a lot of times that's a blessing in disguise. So when people try to what? Try to throw darts and try to what? Hurt us or harm us, they're really helping us out to test us. Because everybody in here will be tested and tempted until we die. Tested by God, tempted by Satan. Do we want to use or do we want to stay clean? And a lot of us make excuses to go get high because I smacked my neighbor. <laughs> I ain't done that for like 10 years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, how about number three? Number three. And talking about, for those who just came in, we're talking about why I'm dirt. Topic is what? Um, um, creating habits and uncreating a habit to start another habit. Yo, it's like 11 to 5. That's the first time I heard that. Oh, wait, 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 to all toxic behaviors that um that push people away. Number three, acting like we always the victim. Who play the victim all the time? Come on, you want to? We listening? Um, I don't know. I just always find a way to figure out I'm the victim, and I see benefit out of it. So sometimes, most of the time, I hop on that little bit of benefit because it helps me in the long run. Okay. To be honest, but I've been working on a lot of things out of my comfort zone. That's one of the things I'm working on. Not to do that because I see that as using people. To my to my advantage and to their downfall. I don't want to do that. I'm not that type of person anymore. Okay. I was and I did was blinded, and I'm not blinded no more about that situation. But I was like that. I'm working on. It. Okay. You sharing that? Blind and honest. Gotta keep it a hundo. That's right. How much time you clean today, bro? Um. Oh what? Everything. I think it was like uh. 5.30, 6.30 this morning, I was hitting my weed ball. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I got a lot going on. It's the worst of the worst right now. I've never been so low in my life, and this is like the last month and a half. It's been hitting the fan. I had an epiphany over the, right after I got done talking to you, and I choose the bathroom, and I see all the things that are happening, and that it's just going to it's gonna destroy the world that I got hardly built up right now that I... I can't even build. It's going to destroy it. And I'm scared for myself and everyone else around me at the moment. I got so much crap going on. I hit in the fan. I don't got the knowledge like I used to because of my coma. I get the results back from my MRI. I, had, I think I get the results back today from the MRI I had on Thursday to my brain because I was in a coma for 15 days. He said, if I came out the coma, I'd be a vegetable. Couldn't wipe my own ass. Comprehend yes or no. Question. I fat lined on her table. Five times, he pulled my cap back because he thought I was dead. I just came to. Didn't know who my own mother my uncle that was like my dad, my best friend, the love of my life. I didn't know who any of them were for like two and a half, three months. I thought they were just some strangers trying to get me for what little benefits I did have. But the doctor had to show me a picture of me with the tubes and a mirror. I didn't know my name. They were calling me Mr. Voice. And the hospital bars, you know, safety dummy bars, mm -hmm. they were like this. Because they were calling me, and I thought they were calling me outside my name. I thought they were disrespecting me until the doctor showed me. And... I didn't know who I was or where I was or still any of that, but I still had enough knowledge to be a little six out of the eight doctors that were treating me and that eight to nine out of the 12 nurses that were treating me in the fields they spent their life because one had a double master's and over four years experience and I had more knowledge on what was going on. They gave me like three or four words and I, I completed something that they had to look up. And I did it with all of them. They all walked. Most of everyone I said that I'd be little, be walked down, crying like a newborn baby, just getting their ass smacked, the breathe out the room. 
I got kicked out that. I came out my coma. I was out for 72 hours. I had seven security guards walk me over to the bus stop and say I couldn't go back to that property because they didn't want me there because I pissed everyone the fuck off because I just spoke the knowledge I did have, but I didn't have knowledge on myself. I had knowledge and everything that I never studied. Not a hair. I didn't have doctor's crap. I don't know crap about that. But I had more to knowledge than them than they had to Google on their phone and the computer mm-hmm. when I was hitting them with the stuff. Yeah, you had a hospital? You got a hospital? No, no, no. I fucking relapsed after being clean for nine months, just smoking weed, and I relapsed on uh, shooting, petting off, whatever you want to call it. And here they put Valium in the back. When you put benzos directly to your bloodstream, that's instant cardiac arrest. Mm. I had one lung working at 30, the other one working at 40. I had... Cruising everywhere, okay, back end, front end, nostrils, throat, and three in my neck just to keep me going. They thought I was gone. Flatline, five times on the table, then done for, had loss of uh, oxygen to my brain. One time for eight minutes, they assumed when I was twitching on the ground before they found me. Ten times when I was on the, ten minutes for the one time on the table, and the last time was over 20 minutes. No oxygen to my brain, I came to just not knowing me or my family, but now it's in all these other fields that I've never studied. It was like all the doors that I shut and locked were wide the hell open and all the ones that were open got shut. I'm like a totally different person learning each day a little more, but my two biggest fears ain't never changed is to be alone, not be on socialized, kind of be isolated and to die without spouse. And right now I'm working on the isolation part. So I'm working on one of my biggest fears um, I watched my grandma deteriorate from old timers to dementia to holding my two fingers before she passed. She was like my mom. My mom had a habit problem. She's clean now for over 10 years, you know. So grandma stepped up on that. My dad passed away in 98 when I was seven. Um, my uncle, my mom's brother, one of them, the one who introduced my dad to my mom, took over after two years of his best friend that was like a brother passing away and was a role model, always said, do as I say, not as I do. And I didn't comprehend that until like 2000, something like 18, 17, 18, what that actually meant. So I watched him deteriorate, strongest man I knew. I had to double check to make sure he wiped right before, you know, the like two days before, well, the day before he went into the hospital and then passed away two days later of uh, heart failure for not taking his medicine and diabetes and all these other problems he's had. And, uh, the, dis- the deceased paper said it was COVID, but it wasn't COVID. I watched him deteriorate. No, I'm not my mom. I was watching my mom deteriorate. I don't know how long she's got before she passed, and I honestly don't know how long I got before I passed because my hope is hitting the fan, and it's like stuck there, just hitting it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm lost. How much time you got clean? Like I said, like 5.30, 6.30 this morning. Right. Very good. Okay, my man. Hey, I'm I'm not going to lie about it. Hey, I had to, yo, it was either go from the first person I seen and put him in the ICU or hit the ball. I hit my ball. It better hit a person. I had training on my but I could hurt like six to ten people by myself with weapons. That's they could have their right. weapons. I don't feel pain when I'm in that mode for anywhere between five to six days. I literally, when I was 13, I had ten cops hitting me with neck sticks, their flashlights, and their temple guns for an hour and 45 minutes, doing everything they could, grown-ass men. I'm 13 years old, just picking them up like five times, throwing them like 50s, or just pushing them off me. Took them an hour and 45 minutes to cuff cuffs on in front of me. That's three on this arm, three on this arm. And, and, that, and each cuff had a cop on that cuff to get the cuff on my arm. And that took an hour and 45 minutes for that. And I just, I don't want to go out and let loose. I don't have that barrier like I used to. I'm kind of keeping myself isolated, but I don't want to because that's it's hitting my biggest fear now. But it's the only thing I feel safe doing to an extent because people, I give them my trust and they think it's a game. It ain't no game. If I give you my trust, I'm inviting you into my life. If I'm inviting you into my life, that means there's something there. You know, and if there's something there, I'm gonna invite you. But if you wanna screw me, and take it as a joke. I'm going to take you as a joke. And it's not pretty at the end of the day. Okay. All I right, got well, so much going on, and I'm this it would be a totally different person for the next few days or so. So don't mind me too much. This is just a multiple personality disorder kicking my ass right now that I can't control. This is the one that's 
Yeah, you can see how I am compared to usual. You see where I'm at like this? Mm -hmm. I ain't never like this. I might speak a little bit, but yeah, I'm... Mania. No, it's the filter that I had. It disappeared. It hit Houdini. Now you see, now you don't. You know? I call this side of me Andrew. The side you all see before is Drew. And then I got a couple others in between that part of the mix. <laughs> Yo, you guys ain't seen nothing. Not even the hair. You guys ain't seen tip the iceberg. Yeah, you still look like tip the hair. You guys up here. Something. Okay. People can't handle it. All right. Slow but sure steps. If not, you're going to break ankles. You break ankles in your knees. And what are you going to do? Crawl up your arms? And then <laughs> it's just how it happens. I have a lot of spirits, a lot of different states, a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. I even had a monk go from not talking for so long and to freaking chasing me with whatever stick it was swinging that drawn at me. A monk? A monk, yes. I knew him before he was the monk. I went to go see him to visit him. And he got like, I don't know, like five years not talking and like 10 years of being a monk. And I literally just hit him with um, a, a small thing. Yeah. You know, everything you know and love is an opinion that's been jotted down, carried on, repetitively changed and repetitively brainwashed. And I wouldn't be one of the number that hasn't been invented yet, so I don't even try and follow that. And everything he wrote down, pointed at, I came back to the point where he went like this. He walked over by the swords. I see him pull the stick up, and he goes down like this. It's like maybe not this far away from my face. I got up, and I hauled ass. All right, Derek, you have just a little bit of time. Yeah, all right. Thank you, brother. Okay, we got 15 minutes, all right? Thanks for sharing that, brother. Yeah. All right, so, so being what? Envious of what? Everyone else? That's yeah. one. Number two, taking everything too personal. Three, acting like we playing the victim. Who played the victim? All right, like what? I, I just feel like I do sometimes. I might not. Okay, okay. I don't know how much to say. Sorry, I shouldn't even raise my hand. <laughs> Anybody play the victim? For, it's called manipulation. Come on. Well, I don't do it for manipulation, but I wanted to add something. That um, taking everything personal, I did that before the drugs. Mm -hmm. When I think about everything, with I used to play for the Far Side Knights, and we was in practice, and I was running with the football. Somebody tapped me, and I wanted to fight because I took it personal. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? He was on my same team. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, every everything I take, everything I take, I took personal. Mm -hmm. You know, on a, in an immature level, though. You know, but I always been that way before the drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, everything was I was the victim. Everything was a personal attack. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, even if they didn't come directly at me, you know, because I did, I did a lot of prison time, and a lot of dudes in prison. They like they like barking, but you know, all oh, you them elfers and all that and this that and I gotta constantly talk myself up. Don't grab that, don't grab that, don't punch him in his mouth. I'm not talking to you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I wanna I wanna take it. I wanna, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you know, I never thought about it, but that's one of my personality traits, you know what I mean, that I'm trying to get better with though, but um, I have gotten better with it, but you know, I take everything for sure. Okay. You working on that? Yeah, I'm definitely working on that. Awesome. How much time you got clean, brother? Um, today. Hey, all right, brother. Good examples. Thank I you. I don't feel like the outcast not being, you know. Yeah, thank you. You just made my day a lot better, sir. How about hoarding? Who hoard their pain? Hoard pain and loss. I do, but I'm not going to speak because I'll take the rest of your time. <laughs> Like Any, honest. Okay. How, how about pain and loss? Anybody who hoard their pain and loss? Anybody? How's that dangerous? <laughs> Make you what? Makes you get high. Very good. Give you the perfect excuse to go get high. Yeah. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Obsessive negative thinking. Who got catastrophic thinking? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get high again. I know it. My man right here. Come on. How you doing? What's up? You got a, a, obsessive negative thinking, which causes us to be toxic. Causes us to be talking? Yeah, I'm um, obsessive negative thinking. So I have to say I have it. I yeah. always think terrible. You do? Yeah. Okay. Like only when I'm not high. Or only when I'm high, I'm not thinking this bad shit. Okay. So when you're sober, what? Oh, it's over. It's all bad. When you're sober? Yeah. Oh, okay. For sure, for sure. I'd be wanting to end the minute. Do you? Oh, for sure. Oh, so when you sober, you be sounding? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's how I am. When I'm sober, I'm a hothead. You look at me funny, I'm ready to fight. When, I, when, I, when I'm high, I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to fight. You got the same sign? What's your sign? I'm Aries. You Aries? Aries. I'm Capricorn. Okay. Deadline Capricorn and um, Aquarius. Aquarius, okay. Yeah, I'm the 18th of January and the 19th, the deadline. All right. Okay. Capricorn, so I, I got to split. All right, okay. 
You get better with that, brother? Trying to have positive thoughts? No, not at all. <clears throat> not at all? Yeah, the only way I'm going to be good is when I get my weed card. I feel you. Okay. All right. He honest? I'm going to set me a clean. From what? Everything. <laughs> okay, so I don't consider this being dirty when I'm drinking alcohol. I think that's perfectly normal. She disagrees with me. Alcohol is a drug. Shit, man. <laughs> Everything you know in lunch is a pig meat that's been kind of done in brainwash. So technically, it's not wrong or right. It's just humanity likes to put a smiley face or a sad face on what fucking drug to use. Like, literally, like, y'all want to give me psych meds and say, oh, that's good, even though it'll make me a fucking zombie. I understand that. that shit. Right. But when I'm doing other shit... Not hurting nobody. Y'all want to have a fucking problem. Now they got meds that don't have alcohol. That would have. Um, it's not a narcotic. So we're not talking about those. Some people abuse that. You find what I'm saying? Meds. It's used for what? Honestly, I think for the ailments. Word to join this group would be moderation when it comes to alcohol. Okay. Not just completely exiling it. Because be real, it's gonna be there. It's going to be there. But we don't have to what entertain because I can't take a sip of anything because I'd be down the drain along with the bottle. That's you. That's me. Very good. But alcohol is a drug. So if we want to be in this arena called recovery and not talking clean and living dirty, we got to give up the tapes. So I do drink. And you drink. I understand it. So I'm a harm reduction. I'm not a dude to come to debate nobody. What you want to do, what you think is how you think. I'm not dogmatic. I ain't trying to change what you think. We just what? We just put, we just co co -host, coerce you and others to talk about what? What you're doing. To hope you see another side or what you ain't doing, or what you should be doing. You find what I'm saying? That's called motivational interviewing. You know what I'm saying? Because some people hold what you say to what? Told you by your word. And that's, and you know what I'm saying? Then you can crash and burn and shoot yourself in the foot. So I learned to let the people talk and figure out their own solutions and their own way out of doing it with you, how they want to build things. And just, just give my opinions. That's it. I know one too many in a thousand. You better believe it. You know what I'm saying? So how much time you got not drinking? Oh, no, I drank last night. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to stop. All right, you didn't drink today, though, right? I'm probably going to stop when I get my weed card. So, no. All right, but you didn't drink today. Oh, no. Yeah, give it to him. All right, bro. Thank you. Right, listen, recovery does not it's begin. All, it's all an opinion at the end of the day, so no. whatever your opinion. Oh, we got five minutes, y'all. Recovery don't begin until we get honest. That's all we want. If you drink, you drug it, okay. Just be honest. And help us all to be honest. Yeah, because right. we are liars, we in the dark. But I mean, honestly, it can hurt you, man, people too much. I'm not doing cocaine. Not me. I, 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 I like to, to toughen up. I start doing heroin. Like, I'm not doing anything but just with the weed and alcohol. I think I'm doing great. I've been there before. Hey, come on, we got seven minutes. Come on, seven minutes. Come on. Yo, how you gonna provide seven? <laughs> seven minutes. 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 Seven um, I thought I wanted my mer I thought I wanted my medical marijuana card, but over the weekend, um, I don't. I, I think I gotta get rid of that too, mm -hmm. you know, because like um, I make excuses to smoke marijuana. Ah, uh -huh. so it's almost like I'm doing dope, crack, whatever. Anytime I'm making excuses to do something, then you know maybe I shouldn't be doing. It. Anybody hear that? Yeah. There's a friend of mine who who shared that up at Recovery Centers of America. He had a car too. He didn't have cataracts. He didn't have no health issues. He just wanted to what? A license to keep smoking. But he got real with himself in treatment. He said, you know what? He tore up his car. That like was a credit card. He cut it in half. He said he didn't need it. Just like you were talking about. Because he was using it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I just, I just came to the, I mean, I, yeah, I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I ain't got no, you know what I mean? I just wanted anything to not fill with, fill reality. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And I realized that over the weekend, like, you know, I was happy about, I put down all this other stuff, but I'm still doing that. And now that is making me feel like I'm doing the other stuff. Because mm -hmm. it still costs money. Mm -hmm. And your time. Yeah, and my time, and my brain cells. Mm -hmm. So. Sober high is the best high. A sober high. It's the I best. Yeah. I ain't gonna <laughs> how I was. I got okay, okay. Awesome. How you doing, Queen? Good to see you. We're having fun here today. A <laughs> different, but this is beautiful. How about this red? And lack emotional self-control. 
A lack of self-emotional control can be toxic to a lot of people mm-hmm. when we don't have control. But you know, you know, like you, some places you go, you don't want to take people with you because mm-hmm. they don't know how to what? Right. Yeah. Ain't no people like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Okay. I'm one of them. You want to? <laughs> Yo, you said be honest, be honest. Yeah, be honest. Be honest. Uh, honestly, I'm about to quit all these drugs and become the server main, but... I'm saying usually when I'm in server me, it's either six to eight months I'm in jail, or I got I know, right? a, 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 a group of gang members looking for my life back at my state. So I'm gonna do this, but this time I'm gonna try to do it the right way. But I might, you know, get a couple more attempted murder cases with my hand or something like that. You know, I'm just being honest. You know, you should be honest. I'm, I'm gonna be open up. I'm going to try this new, so I'm just letting everyone know if I come off with more of an attitude or not as humble as I was, it's just because I'm trying to get clean, not go to jail if I probably as well. I'll be in jail and fight back before I go back, so they better bring me in the army. <laughs> Facts. So I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing and take this all off. And when I take that shit, all it does is make my uh, severe, explosive anger ten times more on edge. And I'm more and more on edge than I've ever been, so just giving a heads up. If I am rude or whatever... Speak up after I'm done, and I will apologize or do whatever, and we take our distance or you take my apology, but I'm just giving heads up. No disrespect to anyone. Just let me know what the changes are going to be. I'm going to be a different person than what I was. I'm not going to really have too much of a focus. All right. How okay. about judging? Who judge people? Everyone. We got family members that judge Seven us. Seven billion people on the planet, and I say about six billion and a half judge. Okay. If not, all seven. Okay. All right. Like I said before, everything we know and love is nothing but an opinion. Jot it down. So on so forth. I'm not going to repeat myself like an answer machine now. All right. Anybody got family members that judge you? Yep. Hey, come on. You want to talk about that? Who, come on. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. What's up? <coughs> Judging. <laughs> you judge or they judge? How it goes? They judge. All right. They judge. <laughs> okay. All right. When they judge you, how you feel? I used to. Like, shut down. And, I don't know. It would just make me, like, shut up. Like, fall back on a little bit. But now I'm like, I don't even care. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, to each his own. Like, you got way more issues than everybody got issues. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. We all live in glass houses. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I try my best not to judge everybody else. Because once you hit the bottom, once you've been to certain places, I think it kind of humbles you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I always swore, oh, I would never be that addict. I'd never be that addict. And then I became that addict. And when I became that addict, it humbled the shit out of me. Anybody hear that? You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. from that point forward, like, I don't judge nobody else. Come on. I could easily be in those shoes. Yes. You know what I mean? So I just got to fall back from family members that judge and just keep to myself. That'd be good. How much time you have playing? Four months now. Hey, all right. All right. How about cruelty? Who people who lack compassion and empathy? Cruelty. How is that toxic? Come on. Kind of, kind of just explains for itself. Like you don't you don't care for others the way other people care. Mm-hmm. And like for me, I actually just have that like just mentally. Like if I'm not on my psych meds, I really just don't give a shit about people unless like they're in my small circle. Okay. But other than that, like go to hell. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying that. All right. Come on, brother. My my shit's like the opposite. Like I, I, I care too much and get in trouble. Like, like twice. I, the last two times actually I got in trouble. Um, it's because somebody didn't have somewhere to live, so I, I stayed with that person. When I could have went home, and and the next day I was four in the morning, you get pulled over, and I, that whole cruelty thing, man, I, I'm, I'm too nice sometimes, for real, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll give somebody my last and, and struggle, and my and my baby mom says as I do it to torture myself. She's like, why? Would, why would you get when you have to? She said, I don't understand it. Because I like seeing smiles on other people's faces. That, that gets me by. Mm-hmm. It, is it that you believe in karma? Mother karma? Because that, that's, what, that's what it sounds like. You believe in mother karma <laughs> and, and all her outcome. Absolutely. But it's but sometimes, though, you got you to gotta be greedy. Yes. You got to be who? You got to be greedy. Or yeah. selfish. Well, selfish. Selfish, selfish, yeah. Yeah. And, and it depends on what, when you hear that word, it automatically you think it's bad. It's bad. Right. Right. But it's no, not like, no. If you, you have to maintain your own stuff to, to keep your life okay. And I don't, That's I'm, right. I'm still figuring out how to do that. 
That's boundaries. Everybody hear that? Mm-hmm. Good food, brother. Cruelty, lack of what? Compassion. I got dogs. I don't like to see people abuse what animals. Mm. Everybody hear that? Mm-hmm. When I was when I had didn't have dogs, it was sympathy. Now I got dogs, it's what? It's empathy. Mm-hmm. How about holding what? The truth in. Who got reservations? Who, who, who front in public, but you real in private? Let me say that again. Who front in public, but you real in private? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, I have multiple personality disorders, so that's, you know, one is the one and the other one's the other one, and they come out sometimes with the situation. I can't control that. That's a chemical disbalancement in my brain. I can't, that, I can't, I have a speech impediment too. I did eight years of speech therapy just to have a vocabulary. Okay. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say, bro? No, it's a hurt. Oh, uh, you, you uh, just... oh, I got to answer for everything that is an opinionated fact that I stepped in my shoes through through multiple paths and multiple states, through multiple people. Here's another good one. A need for constant validation. Who need to be validated all the time? Come on, me from you. What do you mean by that? Oh, wait a minute. Come on. How you doing? I don't fall on me. I don't know. right there. Come on. How you doing? Okay. All right. Anything of these right here that you can identify with? I'm just trying to get people involved. Um, born in pain and love. Okay. What's your name? Barbara. How you doing, Barbara? Good. Uh, you want to speak on that? Why you do that? Um, I mean, I kind of use it as an excuse. And then <clears throat> also, like, I don't, I, I don't know how to, like, deal with my grief. Anybody hear that? In a healthy mm-hmm. way. The way I deal with it is to get high. Okay. Her grief. She deal with, with getting high. How do you deal with what in a healthy way? Anybody got answers for? Okay. Thank you. Somebody grieving. Somebody, you know, somebody dies. How do we deal with that without using a drug drug in? Anybody got any answers for? Who's been there before? I, I don't got no positive answer. Come on, okay. come on, come on. One, then two. Come on, sis. You gotta face it. You gotta deal with it. Okay. Yeah. You been there before? Yeah, I'm doing it now. Who passed? My son, my husband. How your son passed? If you don't mind us asking, huh? How long ago was this? 2014. Mm, not condolences. Sorry, yeah. yeah. But you just gotta face it and you gotta get rid of guilt and shame and I don't know. It doesn't go away. How about you? You said your husband? Yeah, my husband died and my son died. How your husband passed? Cancer. Mm, my condolences. Yeah. My kid took a, a press pill. He was taking, he was taking. Perks and Zannies, and he went up and got shit off somebody else, and it was a pressed pill. Mm-hmm. I heard about those. Yeah. I heard about those. Yeah. Right. Yes. And that fucked me up. I, I just blame myself. Like I go over it all the time. I should have called him at this time. You blame but, yourself too, Barbara? Okay. All right. Okay. Let me make sure. Thanks for sharing that. I condolences. One more. Wait. One more suggestion in the back. Ah, how you doing? I saw your hand. <laughs> Yeah. What's I, your name? I don't deal with it well. You don't? All. Grieving? How you deal with it today? Not at all. I don't even think about it. Block it out. Okay. Do you, do, you, do you get high? Let go and let go, right? Let go and let go. Very yeah. good. Right. A little prayer always helps. Very good. You hear that, Bob? How much time you have to brother? Oh, I don't know now. Probably about 46. 40 days? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. How much time you got clean, sis? In the back. Oh, wow. Hey, all right. God bless you. Back to Barbara. Come on, Barbara. What's up? <laughs> we are all of us, we are born to what? <coughs> to die. Sometimes we got unexpected deaths. And I don't know, listen, if somebody dropped out the day, the day I know I can't use, that's one thing. I'm going to have to what? Reminisce the good times that we had together. My grandmother died in the Bronx. And I, and I felt guilty because I could have spent more time with my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? Stop stealing from her. Stop taking from her. Stop using her for my leverage to do what I wanted to do. But and when she passed away, I saw how immature and how selfish I was. And because I could have been there more for my grandmother to be there as assistance. But I was so selfish and so impulsive and wrapped up in my own self, I couldn't see that was a beautiful sister who needed some, some help. But yeah, other cousins and all that have been there. But me... I should have been there. You feel what I'm saying? But grief is natural. They said this right here. They said, listen, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Anybody catch that? 
Pain is inevitable. We will all face pain. But to keep suffering, that's our option. Do you choose to suffer? <coughs> huh? I guess I have been. Okay. You ready to stop suffering? <laughs> Ready to stop? Do you like to feel like you like to feel like be sober? Huh? Like, do you see when you don't use drugs, you're feeling everything. The crying, the hurting, the guilt. It's like the five stages of what? The seven stages of what? Grief. The first stage is shock and denial. Like Bernie, when Bernie Mac died, I was in shock. You feel what I'm saying? When Michael Jackson died, I was in shock. I was in denial. Nah, they still alive. Number two was what? Anger and bargaining. Right? When I had to had the what? Angry because I couldn't use no more. Bargaining to what? Sell drugs, but still on the plantation of what? Active addiction. I'm going to stop smoking crack. Let me smoke some weed. Stop doing weed. Let me get drunk. Leave the drugs alone. Let me do some pills. Whatever, like, et cetera, et cetera. Bargaining. They came what? Um, loneliness, reflection, and depression. I reflect on the time I had. The loneliness, now I'm not with it. And the depression because I'm not a part of what I used to do. You feel what I'm saying? The seven stages of grief. When we grieve, we go through what? We go through chambers. Just like this 12 steps. But as we going through them, we got to stay clean as we going through them. It's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good. We're going to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes we're going to just throw up, the, throw up the hand and surrender and go high and go whatever. But God got something in you that the enemy wants you not to discover. The enemy knows what God put in you. His job is to do everything to make us not discover the gift that God put in us. So death is a big one. And if we're not anchored into our high power, reading, studying, applying, support, all that matters at the end of the day. You hear me, sis? Let me ask you, what are you grieving over? Um, my dad. What happened to him? He died. How he passed? Um, he had got COVID and then he beat it, but it like upset his other um, issues, uh, and he died, yeah. It complicated, okay. Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. pot, his pot, how, how long ago he passed? Almost two years, it'll be two years in May. Okay, he was the only girl? I'm the only, only child. The only child? Okay, and that's what you're grieving on your pops? How old was he? He was 86. Ah, a long life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, you don't, I know you're supposed, like, your parents are not supposed to bury you. Right. You're supposed to bury your parents, but... For me to go through and have my dad for 30 years and then just the one day like he's not like i had to change his diaper mm. you get me like he all up until that time until six days before he passed he was active like he drove he was out playing in the garden he ran around with my kids and then the last six days of his life it was like he in hospice he got a diaper i gotta help him while i'm changing his diaper he can't talk to me mm. he's barely like he can't eat. he don't even know how to eat or drink anymore like mm. Mm -hmm. I understand. I mean, it's not an excuse to use, but I just, I'm, I'm still not, I'm learning how to deal with it still. Okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. More prayer, right? Very good. Thanks for sharing that, Barbara. Our condolences. How much time you got clean? Today. Today. Good job. It's important. Very good. How about prayer? Everybody praying here? Very good. I, Since don't, you, I don't believe in religion. Okay, come on, sis in the back. No. <laughs> I don't believe okay. there's a God or a Jesus or anything. Come on, I think in the back. A book for, uh, the hand was up. Yeah, come here, shut it down now, y'all. Huh? You asked you pray. I, I raised my hand. Oh, okay, I saw your hand earlier. I'm sorry, I, I didn't call on you. I don't know if it's called Pain and Loss. Pain and Loss. I was reason people was just constantly people that I used to hang with when I was getting high all of a sudden was sending their condolences to me but they were trying to get me to come to town with them and each time I just kept saying no the only time I will go to town is when I have to go to my brother's you know room and I kind of like knew I kind of felt like they just I mean in my mind I was thinking they want me to come and tell them what they do mm -hmm. and the best that I stay away from them is that I want to do it I'll clean Mm -hmm. And just go to town, do what I have to do, and then come back to uh, you know, continue the class. Mm -hmm. Some thoughts were going back in my head, and, and I was like, I know me, I probably would have. But I just kept on saying, no, no, no more, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. So I had a 
Okay. Very good. How much time you have clean? Hey, all right. So for me to stay jail free, drug free, stress free, sucker free, I practice spirituality. I stay in prayer. <laughs> I stay patient. I persevere through all storms. I stay humble and ask for help. I stay open minded and I stay what? Teachable. I stay honest as possible. I love when people are honest because they help me stay honest because I always was a liar. I practice forgiveness. Because I can't ask God for forgiveness if I'm still holding myself hostage because I got resentments towards you. I practice on having what? I know what? Knowing my purpose. I found it. Doing this right here. Acceptance. That guess what? I can't change people, places, and what? Things. So they don't want to pick up their trash. <laughs> got to surrender. Very good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Except and surrender. Except and surrender. And the last one is what? Love. Who love themselves today? How you know you love you? I love you. And my man in the back. How you doing, soldier? All right. Good to see you. You love you today? How you know? What you doing to show you love you? Oh, man. Everything. To be specific, um, yeah. I need to do. What? Just the opposite of what got you here? Yeah. <laughs> My man. All right. Real simple. How much time you got clean, soldier? Um, I'm going to say about how many months? Over two months. Hey, hey, all right. <laughs> Last one, we shot some of my man brother here on the corner. You love you today? You, yes, sir, you. Yeah, I sure do. How you know you love you? What you doing to show you love you? Every, all the right things, sir. Yeah? Yeah, pray. Everything's good. Okay. You a changed man today? Oh, yeah, every, yeah. All right, when you came in here, what would you see different about you now since the first time you walked through these doors? Uh... More into uh, another um, great upgrade on recovery. Another <laughs> another level of um, another re another key type of the for my ceiling. No, um, <laughs> just the process of the key recovery. I'm doing so. Uh, I don't know. Very good. Okay. How much time you got clean? Oh, I got six weeks on beer and four years on opiates. And Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, I love y'all unconditionally. Truly, truly mean that. Thank God for Miss Sophia and a new counselor. What's her name? Kim. Oh, Kim? Kim? Kim. 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 Yeah, okay, I remember Kim. Yeah, how you doing? Hey, next, see y'all two weeks. New topic, same passion. Who woke us up, y'all? God. Praying of serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not ours, be done. Amen. All right, everybody. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.